Welcome to this Holy Week service of remembrance. I'm so glad that you're here. Through this worship, hearts are changed and rearranged. Way before Jesus' death, a woman showed up at a dinner party and anointed Jesus. We'll hear that story in a little bit. And together, we'll remember the last meal shared with his closest disciples before his death. My name is Kelly Vaughn, and I am leading worship today along with Reverend Monique Cherie Pierre. And our scripture reader tonight will be Bobby Fortunati. As we begin, two things will be great to have close by. First, remembering the story of the anointing, a little bit of oil, any kind of cooking oil will do, olive oil if you have, or it could be even a scented oil. And for remembering the Last Supper, a piece of bread, a tortilla, cracker, and some kind of juice or even water will do. So go ahead, take a moment, put us on hold, and as you get these items, and then come back. And in a bit, you'll have everything you need for the service to begin. Welcome back. Uh, now I invite you to take a deep, relaxing breath. Mm. And another one, this time even longer. Exhaling out. Centering ourselves. Making room in your heart for remembering. Let us pray. Healer of our every ill. We gather to remember powerful events of anointing and communion before Jesus' arrest, torture, and death. Declaring we live in the domain of your loving truth, and we acknowledge that we go unconscious of your glory. Remembering that our, we are surrounded by the countless blessings, we acknowledge the lack, scarcity, fear thinking that can grip us. And now, in this moment, as we slow down and we settle, you are guiding the power of action within our hearts. Melt us, mold us, fill us, change our hearts, make us holy, make us whole. Amen. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true, change my heart, oh God, may I be like you, change my heart, oh God. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. You are the
The story of Jesus being anointed by an unknown woman at a dinner party can be a heart-changing story. As you listen, see if you can imagine the many emotions that might be flowing in the hearts of those present with Jesus. I read Matthew 26, verses 6 through 13. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar with a very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But the disciples saw it. They were angry and said, Why this waste? For the ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring the ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, whenever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of me. Oil was used in many ways and by ancient people. Uh, mixed with various herbal remedy things, it became a healing agent. It was also used in practical ways for cleansing and also for softening the skin. Oil also played a significant role in rituals, and still today it does so. The story of the woman in the alabaster jar of oil is symbolic ritual action of great power. The pouring of oil on Jesus' head stood in the traditions of anointing kings on their head. This ritual of oil, though, on Jesus' head uh, was carried out by an unnamed woman whose action of love and devotion and, uh, was a clear message that this teacher was her sovereign. It caused great anger, great angry re reactions among the disciples, his closest ones, who loved him dearly. This story can sensitize us then to see our tendencies to actually withhold our resources and expressions of extravagant love reminding us that we have just this one brief, precious life to live acts of love and justice and to build communities that express the same. But here's the thing. Jesus turns the meaning of her anointing act on its head, so to speak, because he recalls another use of oil in another ritual, she is anointing my body for burial, he declares, and what she has done will be remembered. Her devotion lives on. So as we remember hers, her devotion, her love, we can connect then with our own devotion. Take a heart-opening breath. And you ought to have oil if you do. I hope you do. Take your oil. And dip your fingers in your oil, just a little bit, and then place that on the top of your head, like so. Of course, and as you do then, let it rest there for a few moments. I invite you to think of all the people who extended care to you uh, throughout your spiritual journey those who offered care to you and feel that care as an affirmation, an affirmation of your worth. Know that this kind of love is always and already available to you through relationship with the one called Jesus. Accept this anointing so that you might offer that love to others you have been anointed. Amen. In your love, make us whole. 
May we rest in your compassion, calm the lost, weary soul, in the warmth of your love. May your peace fill our hearts, may we know the love of Jesus by your grace. Soul, make us holy, make us whole. Pieces begin to fall into place for the upcoming betrayal. Unthinkable trauma, heart-changing events of love. Matthew 26, verses 14, 19, continues to tell the story. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for opportunities to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into this city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Walls mark our boundaries and keep us apart. Walls keep the world from our eyes and our heart. Tables are round, making room for one more. Welcoming friends we had not known before. So build us a table and tear down the wall. Christ is our host, there is room for us all. Walls make us sure who is in and who's out. Walls keep us safe from all questions and doubt. But at a table in open exchange, new ties are formed as our lives rearrange. So build us a table and tear down the wall. Christ is our host, there is room. Built a wall stone by stone Now at a table The bread that we share Joins us to Christ In a circle of care So build us a table And tear down the wall Christ is our host There's room Matthew chapter 26, 
verses 20 through 29. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became greatly distressed and began to say to one another and to him, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl will, with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Lord. And Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's pray. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, holy vessel of divine presence right here on earth. Your Spirit anointed him as a container of grace, preaching good news to the poor, proclaiming release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed, and announcing that the time had come when you, you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those considered too broken for company. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the path of healing and recovery, delivering us from our despair and isolation and making with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. So, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of the healing and life-transforming acts of Jesus Christ, we now offer ourselves as a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we proclaim the mystery of faith. Repeat after me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is here. Christ will come again. And now pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us your healing spirit through Christ Jesus so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, healing agents out there in a broken world. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to the whole world. And now, taking your bread, this is the body of Christ given for you. And now, taking the cup, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and remember Jesus. Amen.
If you've been moved, touched, or inspired by this online worship, be sure to share it with a few of your friends and family. If you're watching us on YouTube, did you know that you could subscribe to our channel? You can also follow us on Facebook. Now, please receive the blessing. Go now with confidence that God is making us whole and holy, recovering our depths of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me.